Texas. They say everything's bigger here, and they're right. We've got big cars, big hearts, and even bigger stakes. This is beef country, Texas. Home to the Alamo, the Cowboys, and the largest military installation known to man. So big, it has a big name. Fort Hood, the great place. It's got a Texas-sized podcast as well. And this is it, right here. Fort Hood's great big podcast. Yeehaw. Why are you laughing? We're recording this because we <laughs> Just were... Just getting started. He we hadn't were, told a joke yet, and there she goes. Well, we were being witty. We, we were have having... a new show co-host yes, this week. well, just for this week. Sergeant Melissa Lassard. Hello. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Glad to be here. That's true. Better be. She's, <laughs> she was here, and we were all talking warming ourselves up for the show but it was getting so good we just hit the record button <laughs> yeah because it would have been lost and then then that would have affected all of you how sad would you have been to know all that good stuff was just left on the floor <laughs> well, five second roll <laughs> i'm editing this week it could still end up on the cutting that's room true. floor that's true <laughs> that's true we were talking about uh i saw a movie yes you did but i had not revealed the movie <laughs> <laughs> it better not be the one that's trending on Netflix right now. And that's what she said. Ah, Wait, that's, that's what that she said. Out like a, <laughs> yeah. No, that she said that. The not like that's what, that's what, that's she, what said. she said, yeah. but that's what she said. <laughs> oh my gosh. It better not be that one that's trending on Netflix right now. That's what she said. That is what somebody. she's saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't. Okay. We would not talk about that show on the podcast. Good. That is a disgusting. Nobody needs to be watching that show. Part. This is my opinion, and not the opinion of the United States Army or the United States government. It's a disgusting show, and uh, it should not have been made. And that's me coming as a as a filmmaker. It's incredibly. You don't. You're giving me the. You don't yeah, know. I'm lost. All right, we'll broach it for a second before we get to the movie I saw. Uh, there is a streaming service. Well, Netflix called. Yeah, you already bag. said it. So Netflix made a movie. Yeah. Uh, called Cuties. Cuties. And it is described as a coming of age story of an 11 year old Muslim girl who discovers a dance group? modern dance, but not dance like the dance, but like. Uh, it's highly twerking, sexualized dancing, stripping kind of stuff, and they're kids. Oh, man, bad. And she discovers her sexuality and pushes back against her religion. And, and she's blossom. 11. Mm. And it's. It's got a rating of ninety percent Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. It's got uh, it's that's because only the freaks are watching it, right? It's very highly sexualized. It's not good stuff. Yeah, you don't need to be watching the sexuality this stuff. Uh, rating is severe oh, on it, and it's eleven year old kids. Yeah, that's and, bad. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. So, but that I agree. Is, that is not the movie. I and saw, we're not so going to talk about that can, movie because it's disgusting, and I had no, no idea what it is. Yeah. So, so. we're going to take that. Okay. Go off to the side. All right. So I saw a movie that was not that. <laughs> I saw. Was it disgusting though? No, it was disgustingly awesome. <laughs> really? Yes. It was Bill and Ted face the music. I don't know. Oh. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, as a kid, I saw. Do you know who Bill and Ted are? No. Dude. You don't know, what? So I'm not a big movie buff person. All right, Bill and Ted. Do are, you know who Keanu Reeves is? Matrix. Yeah. All right. Well, he was. Bill or Ted? He He's was Bill. Ted. He's Ted. Before the Matrix, he was Ted. That's how people knew Keanu Reeves was as Ted. It's like his first big break. Yeah. In the movie biz. 
My husband knows all about movies. So Bill and Ted does. were two. Well, he's got to listen to this show and go, <laughs> I told they, you. They were two musicians who talked the, the California accent. Whoa, dude, you know, like this, man. Just so you know, people in California don't talk like that. They did like, talk like that in the 80s, <laughs> or so we all believe. For sure. So um, they have to pass their history class or they're going to flunk out of high school. So... George Carlin comes from the future with a a phone booth, and then they go through time in the phone booth and take Almost historical. Like f- Doctor Who. Oh, yeah, <laughs> to take people for their history paper. Okay. And and then they write a song that unites the world. Awesome. So that's that was the plot of the first movie. The second movie, they go to hell, and then <laughs> now we've got the uh, the the third movie. <laughs> Which wraps up the trilogy. Um, and if you liked the first two Bill and Ted movies, let's be honest, nobody really likes the second one. Right. If you liked the first Bill and Ted movie, this movie was written by the team that wrote the first one. Oh, there you go. And yeah, it brings us full circle. It's a fun movie. Keanu Reeves is fully back into his his Ted persona. I kind of sort of saw a trailer. Don't they have kids? They do. Okay. They have kids and the kids are them. What? Well, what? no, that sounds weird. No, yeah. Um, no. The kids are like them. Oh, like them. Yeah, so they speak. Okay. Like them. Hmm. So it's a fun movie. It's fun. I saw it with the wife. Yeah. We were the only two people in the theater. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and we laughed out loud nice. multiple times. It was a fun, fun movie. And I even got teary, a little teary. Uh-huh. Yeah, I did. Uh, there was a scene I didn't know I needed this. All through the movies, Ted's dad Uh is writing him the whole time because he does not approve of his lifestyle choices and he wants him to go to military school. He's a he's a police chief, right? You know, very straight and narrow. Ted is is not like that. And in this one, his dad finally accepts him. Nice for he realizes that he had made a mistake, and I was like, you know what? I didn't know that I needed to see Ted's dad approve of Ted. But oh, it was really nice. That's good. It was. You're looking at me like on crack. <laughs> 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 it was it was fun. It was a good movie. There was like I said nobody in the theater. There was so social distancing, not an issue. Yeah. Not an issue. Um, you still can go see movies, though. They've got the social distancing. They've got it set up. It's just there's not a lot of movies no. out no. there yet. There's not, yeah. and they've... Uh, and they're holding some back, yeah. right? But they just announced that, that Wonder Woman, 1984, the second Wonder Woman, yeah. is got getting pushed back. Pushed back as in they're not releasing it? No, not until next year. Not the other. So there's a few movies. There's a disaster movie called Greenland mm-hmm. that's coming out. You know, a world ending okay. disaster kind of film. And like 2020? No. Uh-uh. No, it's worse than that. There's a comet that its fragments are crashing into the world and blowing. So it's, you know, towering inferno okay. worlds. And, yeah. you know, we got to get from point A to point B without yes. getting killed. I like this okay. kind of movie. Yeah. So that's coming out. Um, there's a few little smaller films, but there's no big, what we would consider big blockbusters. Yeah. Cinema coming out until. November, which is when the next Marvel movie comes out, Black Widow. Okay. Okay. You know, what's interesting, seeing the movie, there was a trailer for a movie that I had forgotten that they <laughs> there was a trailer for this. COVID changed the entertainment landscape so much. At the movie theater, they still had up the movie posters from before the cinemas shut down. Right. Oh, my god. So goodness. it's like... The, <laughs> Ghostbusters was supposed to come out this summer. Right. Well, that didn't happen. It was just walk, walking by these things going, nope, that didn't happen. Didn't see that. That hasn't been released. Nope. Nope. There were like two movies that had gone direct, the Scooby-Doo movie. Right. And then the Trolls World Tour. Yeah, we watched that. Where the, of what, course you did. But uh, <laughs> I did not. There's a, there's another a Spider-Man spinoff. Oh, really? Coming out. That uh, I totally forgot about it. It's oh. uh, Morbius. Morbus. More. More. You got him getting head shake. He's a vampire. The yeah, living no vampire. Huh. My was, kids watched the other Spider-Man spinoff. 
Spider-Verse. Oh, uh, the end of the Spider-Verse? Yes, they love it that was a great so movie. much. <laughs> that was a fun movie. It has, Is that the animated one? Yeah, it's got Peter Porker, the spectacular spider ham in it. <laughs> so it's, Peter it's a Porker. winner. Yeah. <laughs> That don't sound right. Uh, <laughs> they got a. They've got a pig. He says he's a pig who's Spider Man. Yeah. Okay. He's a he's Spider Pig. And they've got Fat Spider Man whose wife divorced. Him. Yeah, <laughs> Spider Man because <laughs> the universes come together. So all these from parallel universes, Spider Man come together, and one of them, Peter Parker's wife, left him, and he got all fat. And that sounds funny. <laughs> it's it's a very fun, funny movie. Wow. Done really, really well. Really, really well. Too bad I hate comic book movies. Well, it's <laughs> animated. You can pretend like it's a cartoon. There you go. It's, well, we have a very interesting show. We do. Uh, this week, we are going to talk disaster preparedness, something that would be fin- be fin- be fin- be fin- be fin- <laughs> National Preparedness Month. It's a, is September. Yes, which is this All month. All month. And yeah. it would benefit winning <laughs> everyone. To be uh, prepared. Say that three times fast. The uh, because if if any any years needed uh, disaster preparedness, twenty twenty does. And if you Oof. think it can't get worse, just you wait. Uh, plus, <laughs> plus we're gonna talk football. Sooner or later. Yeah, sooner huh? or later we are gonna have a football segment. Are you ready for some football? I am not because I don't care about football, but I will be there anyway. In spirit. Go team. Go hockey. I like hockey. You like yes. hockey? It's almost over. That's because it's been a weird season. This year. She yeah. gave me the, huh, furrowed brow thing. You know that the Stanley Cup playoffs are like almost over. No, I don't even think my husband knows that, and he loves hockey. Yeah, they, they did a weird thing with the hockey season this year. Yeah. It's all out of whack. They're in the playoffs now. I oh think they're in the God. semifinals. I'm going to have to text them after this. <laughs> Did you know? See, we're informing people all the time. I think all the Dallas Stars just got past the... Dallas it's Stars. all about the Bruins? Las Vegas. Those bums. Golden Knights, Knights yeah, which Golden looks Knights. like the Army team. Those Dallas Stars. My husband used to play for an Army uh, National Guard team. Did really? he? Yeah. That's like, what do they play? So he's a good skater? Hockey. Uh, no, they didn't play. Is he a good skater? Or is he <laughs> yeah, played he goalie really and he just falls player. down? No, no, no. No, he played hockey for like 20 years. <laughs> okay. I have not forgiven. Because you don't have to be a good skater to play goalie. You know that. Right? No, I know. You, you just, just got to stand fly. there. You got to be able to fall right. <laughs> I have not forgiven the Dallas Stars from leaving uh, Minnesota. Minnesota. No, I still you have You mean not. the Minnesota North Stars? The North Stars. Uh, North Stars. Yeah, I, I used to go to North Stars games. Yeah. Those bums left. You bums. They kept the same colors, too. They did. They just dropped the North. I know. Off the star. <laughs> Dallas. <laughs> anyway, we'll have more exciting sports talk and stuff uh, right after these non-commercial messages. If you've got problems and feel like you just can't get answers, there's a place for you to turn. The Inspector General's Hotline. They take your issues seriously. If you're at the end of your rope and need someone to reach out to, grab a pen and take down this number. 254-287-7209. That's 254-287-7209. The Fort Hood Office of the Inspector General. They inspect generals so you don't have to. Fort Hood's great big podcast. Factual, fantastical, thrilly, and fun. Who writes this crap? Okay, and we're back. Another <laughs> another quality uh, PSA break there. Can't get enough of those. In fact, you know what? Let's do another one. No, really? No, <laughs> just joking. Okay. Um... But hey, how about that weather? How about that weather? How about it? It's a little wet. It's been a little cold. Ah, it's come almost on. jackety. Fifties. That's cold. In the morning? Come on. That's that's normal everywhere else in the country. Yeah, this is Texas though. I know. It's been hot. It went from hot to not. <laughs> oh. We went from hotty to naughty. <laughs> <That's fast. laughs> oh my gosh. Um, but no, and even like Denver got snow. Yeah. I was, I follow. Well, they are a mile high, right? That's, that's true. Um, especially since they've legalized marijuana. Moving on. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I follow a town in Colorado because I'm a I'm a Colorado file. I guess I really dig Colorado. Uh huh. Um, the history and everything, and I follow a town called Leadville. Well, you're a mining guy. Too. I am. I love mining. Yeah. Um, so I follow Leadville, um, which was historically a silver mining town. Mm-hmm. Um, they still have an active mine there, right. by the way. Uh, <laughs> this is not going to turn into the Leadville podcast. Um, and they they started showing the snow. Right. As it started coming and then Saw accumulating that. and accumulating. Yeah, you had to show me this morning. I know, it's so beautiful. <laughs> um, but, I mean, it, that's, sure, it's nothing new for Colorado to have snow, but it's the fact that a lot of places across America went from fairly warm to not warm at all, right. just like that, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. So And then, um, I mean, weather's doing all sorts of strange things. Or is it? Because, you know, really, come on, come on. How long? I've been alive, live, what, 44 years now. What do I know? Weather. Weather's been around a lot longer than me. Yeah, you think? So, no. Can't hear the head. Can't, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> you don't know? I'm looking at you. I don't know what to tell you. I just well, you know mentioned. that this year is a weird year for weather. Not just weather, everything. 2020 has been. Yes. A year. You were saying something off air about hurricane. What? Yes, there's like uh, five developments that are um, in our area, not like towards Texas. Central Texas? What? No, in oh. the ocean in the right Gulf? off Texas. Um, so one's coming from Africa and it's really big. Mm-hmm. And then there's two more like right next to it. And then there's two right at the bottom of Texas. Wow, these sound all like less hurricanes and more immigration issues. <laughs> <laughs> The, uh, I have a hurricane app that I track. Do you? Yes. Is that your thing? Hurricanes? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I, I like bad weather. You know, when I, I'm Kansas guy, yeah. right? And then to Texas, mm-hmm. for, well, Minnesota, and then Texas. And then I went to live in Japan, and Japan actually gets whacked by hurricanes on quite All a time. regular yeah. basis. Mm-hmm. So the first time like a hurricane's coming, what I know of hurricanes, what I see of you know people on the coast boarding up their their windows and stuff and my wife's like well i'm going to work what are you this is a hurricane what how you can't go to work there's a hurricane oh no in japan it's just like business as usual really they're a hurricane but they're not where tokyo is it's not near as bad they it's just wet yeah it just gets wet it can get some wind uh-huh. but it's not like what you see here where you know destruction right. everywhere tsunami is destructive well yeah but that's not from a hurricane that's from an earthquake or dropping a large rock into the ocean <laughs> that's a tsunami yeah okay there are a lot of different disasters that can happen no matter where you are in the world there are a lot of different disasters what a fantastic segue i have made <laughs> and that's why we have fred corvin from the fort hood installation emergency management Said it wrong. Wow, you, He's the manager. You He's the manager. Sp- you of- sprinted right from that. You didn't. There was no eloquence in that. You took my little. I handed you that, and then you just. <laughs> but continue, please. Uh, we have Fred Corbin, the Fort Hood Installation Emergency Manager here. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm good. Good, good. All right. So, what emergency do we have that has brought you to the podcast today? Well, we have emergencies all the time. Yeah, we do. You know, she's talked about the weather, hurricanes that's going on across the country. You know, that's a, that's a big thing mm-hmm. here in uh, Texas. Floods. Mm-hmm. You know, we've seen a lot of floods in the area, uh, wildfires. So those two of the big things we've seen on the installation in the last couple of weeks. Sure. So um, part of preparedness is making sure that we have the right personnel in place, making sure our response plans are you know, laid out and we're doing the right things to make sure that we're protecting our population and making sure that, you know, the community is uh, safe and you know, we're doing. You think it's do. on purpose. They make national preparedness month right in the middle of hurricane season. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, nowadays you'd be surprised what you hear on the radio and, and news. They, they have a theme for every month to be, you know, if you look at the calendar, sure. every month we have something. Um, so right. September just set aside for National Preparedness Month. Oh. Uh, we do it every year. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not a surprise. We know that in the month of September, we we look at uh, preparedness. Um, not to say that we don't prepare every day and throughout the year, but 
that's that's the month that we set aside um, mm-hmm. for September to do that. And FEMA well, uh, really pushes that out. Every month of 2020 <laughs> has been National Preparedness right, Month. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I, you know, this got me thinking. And you're the guy to ask this question. We're in central Texas. Correct. But hurricanes come to Texas. So does Fort Hood have a hurricane plan? Yes, we do. We That's have, interesting. We have a uh, response plan. Mm-hmm. Uh, depending on the, the hazard at the time, um, we'll open that incident management response plan, sure. incident management response plan. Um, and again, depending on what the hazard is, whether it's a fire, uh, flood, God forbid, we have an earthquake, we do have plans in place for that. Wow. And mm-hmm. so what we do in the emergency operations center each year, or actually each month, we exercise a particular event. It's called a functional exercise. We do mm-hmm. it in our EOC. Um, we call in our tier two personnel, select personnel, um, to come up and operate on a scenario, depending on what it is. So we have a long range, um, calendar, a training calendar that we use in DPTMS. And, um, we just exercise our, um, incident management response plan. I mean, it's not uncommon when we do have hurricanes hitting the, hitting the coast, uh, Fort Hood being used as a staging area to bring in humanitarian aid. Isn't that right? That's correct. I mean, we are generally ready for anything yes yes so we do have plans set in place as you know we just alluded to that we do have um, areas set aside just in case if we're called upon to support uh, any type of hazard or event that we can stage store and um, issue supplies if need be Mm -hmm. and you know you and i have both been involved in those yes we have efforts so i have a question When the units go out and support the the if a different place in Texas have has a hurricane, um, like Houston a couple of years ago, um, do the units go to you to get the supplies or do they provide the supplies themselves? No, well, you know, just like any unit, we take directives and orders from higher. Mm-hmm. Um, as you know, the units follow any force con forces command. Um, directives will come down um, whether they need supplies or Equipment, uh, example, water purification units, tentage, right. those type of things we do have on the installation. So it's just a matter of receiving the, the tasking from higher and look at the available resources that we have on the installation. And the commander will deem necessary and which unit will support that uh, particular task to help our community and support where need be. You know, it's interesting that you bring up the water purification units because people don't realize when a disaster really hits, like a real, right. real deal disaster, you don't have access to water necessarily. And Correct. that's why it's important that you have some sort of reserve that you can tap into. And beyond that, there's a kit that the, right. that the army likes to push forward. That well, that I'm glad that you talked about that because, you know, we have the ready army program. Sure. Um, we promote that. And in that program, we talk about the four tenants, being informed, make a plan, build a kit, get involved. Mm-hmm. And building your kit is one of those things that you can do. Hey, I, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but if I'm prepared um, with my kit, and it may be having those bottles of water, three mm-hmm. days worth of supply mm-hmm. um, in a designated area that your family members know where that kit is. Sure. So if something should happen, hey, I know in my kit I have, I don't know, three days worth of water set aside. That way you're able to sustain yourself until that needed help comes. Sure. And we promote that with our soldiers. Um, We we give the ready army class. Uh, We talk about the four tenants. And one Mm -hmm. of those things is, hey, knowing your environment, know your hazards so you can um, build that kit and share that with your family members. Because it doesn't do you any good if you know where the kid is (laughs) and and your kid doesn't know, you know, he's dad or mom is, is out doing what they need to do. And Hey, your lights go off in your house and, and, and your teenagers there by themselves and say, where did dad say he left that kid again? You know, but if they know, and you practice your plans, um, you know, your rehearsals with your family members on, Mm -hmm. Hey, this is what I want you to do. And it, in a time of need or disaster, you'll know where to go. They lay out uh, setting up that type of thing, uh, not just at home, but it, wasn't it at work and in your car too? Right. It's recommended that you have kits in three locations, um, one at your home, mm-hmm. one in your vehicle, and, and one uh, at your workplace. Mm-hmm. And you say, well, why at my workplace? Well, if you were here when we had the active shooter incident, uh, 
few years back, sure, we were stuck in this building. So if you're a type of person that needed extra medication, you know, you bought enough medication to last you until, you know, 5 p.m. when you go home. But as, as you know, um, people were stuck in their buildings to 10 o'clock at night. Right. And if you're a type of individual that, um, you know, diabetes or whatever, you know, maybe you need to have some extra medication in your kid at work maybe some shoes, you know, if your your feet, you're wearing hard shoes all day and you need to give your feet a break or maybe bring an extra pair of uh, sure. soft shoes in with you. So those are the three areas we look at and we promote that having a kit. You know. My, uh, my workplace kit uh, involves <laughs> a cup of coffee, a bottle of Tylenol and a clean pair of underwear. Right. <laughs> There's my, you got an extra coffee. Keep I'm not there. telling that's right. mine. I'm not telling right. where it's stashed. All right. All right. <laughs> I was listening to the radio the other day. They had the same topic. National preparedness. Really? You listen to the uh, radio? Yes, they I still do. have that? Yes. Um, and they were asked they asked the same questions. If you were to go talk to your family who actually is prepared for a disaster mm-hmm. and um if you had to leave right away, can you take your pets with you? Or do you have time to take your pets with you? That was actually that consider. was a point of contention with me at really? the army in Japan. <laughs> Cause we have to when you're overseas, you have to fill out a packet. So you can, if something happens, you can get out of Dodge real right. quick. Right. And uh, my wife and I had a pet lovebird mm-hmm. that was not allowed uh, to go with us. You could take a cat or a dog, right. but not a bird. And so, right. like, it was, all things were off the table at that point. If the bird doesn't go, my wife doesn't go. Well, if my wife's not going, I can't, <laughs> you know, run off. Sure. Well, well it's, you know, you're talking about pets, that's one thing I talk about uh, in the Ready Army uh, mm-hmm. program. When we're talking with family members, new family members that come in and, and I give a presentation at the community resource course. I say, hey, you need to think about your your pets and special need family members. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. Wheelchairs and, and, and those type of things that we don't we don't think about it until that disaster hits. So I stress that that when you're developing your plan and you're building your kit, take those considerations and, and make sure that it's in your kit or in your plan of action. Absolutely. So what kind of things should people have in their kit? Oh, okay. Every kit will be different. Sure. Need-based, um, flashlights, uh, AFM radio, you know, with the batteries, you know, things that we right. don't use today. Right. Um, but that will come in handy. Um, jumper cables, uh, bottle of water, blankets, um, chem lights, you know, good, good handy things that you can use um, if your car breaks down on the side of the road sure. or if your electricity goes out in your home. You know, those mm-hmm. cam lights definitely come in handy. So just run through your mind and say, hey, what would I need if a disaster would hit? And just walk through the scenarios and you'll be surprised. I don't have this. I don't have yeah. that. And just go out and purchase those items and um, put them in your kit. Yeah. And disaster doesn't necessarily mean an end of the world scenario no, no. here. Oh, not we're not pre- we're not prepping for Armageddon. No, no this, okay. this isn't right. a zombie apocalypse. Right. But um, it could be a bad storm yeah. came through. You know, with those uh, straight line winds, knock down trees, take out your power. You know, those those winds can take out a house. Right. You know, what would you do if the roof was ripped off your house? How would you survive? Right. Right. You know, if you have to get out quickly. A kit allows you to grab. You know, and go. even for me with the COVID, uh, just you know, the last couple months, mm-hmm. Lysol, uh, mask. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, we didn't think about those Rubber things, gloves. but <laughs> now we're in an environment that you know you can't leave the house without them. No, that's a great and, example. And so, you know, I I promote even in my house. Hey, we might need to buy extra Lysol or. You know, everybody was going crazy because toilet paper was running out in Walmart. Okay, so maybe you weren't part of that. Go to to Sam's and buy buy a a few more cases. That that, that wasn't me, but but uh, that's a great example that shows how unprepared the majority of people were for a disruption in their normal lives. Right, right. You know, you suddenly saw all these products were gone, and that's because people had not prepared. Yes. You wouldn't exactly. have seen that knee-jerk reaction if people were actually prepared, right? You, you for the short at, run, you'll, you'll sit at your house. Hey, I'm glad that I took the opportunity to rehearse my plan with my family and mm-hmm. make sure my kit was involved, absolutely, uh, in the right place and so forth. But one of the things we promote with the soldiers and the commander has it in his policy that everyone. When I say everyone, I'm talking about the units will exercise their emergency action plan each 
unit has an emergency action plan, and they're supposed to rehearse, rehearse those uh, at least annually, update them as need be, and report that information that they did rehearse those those plans. So Outstanding. Yeah, it, it never hurts to be too prepared. There's right. no such thing as being too prepared. And if you don't think it can happen to you, earthquakes happened in New Jersey yeah, the other day. <laughs> yeah, they that sure did. People were not expecting that. Growing up in Kansas, they didn't used to have earthquakes now. Now earthquakes are kind of a normal thing there. There's fires that happen. There's floods. You don't know what will happen. Right. There, there is a website, though, for, for folks to go to, find out the information, and, and maybe help them pre- Correct. set Correct. up that kit, right? Yes, you can go to the Ready Army website. It's https colon forward slash ready dot army dot meal. Right. You go to that slide, um, that particular site. They have a lot of links that you can drop down. Um, go ahead and pull those out. And depending on the scenario, you can put in earthquakes like you talked about, mm-hmm. floods, uh, wildfire, um, pets that we alluded to. They have a lot of good uh, information on that that website that you can go to. Outstanding. And FEMA as well. You go to the FEMA website, they have a lot of good information that you can get. Yeah. yeah. That's fantastic. I remember in Japan, I always got to go back to Japan. But You uh, are going back to Japan. Well, I am. But, uh, <laughs> there was a scenario where somehow somebody got wrapped up around the idea because of Mount Fuji, and Mount Fuji is a volcano. Right. What would our... What would our plan be if Mount Fuji erupted? Well, it just so happens. You turn into Pompeii. Yeah, Camp Zama is like right in the floodplain. So it's like, well, we got 11 minutes before we're, we're vaporized. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they'll find a you a couple thousand years from now and you'll be, uh, you know, yeah. an uh, archaeo- our, archaeological site. Our plan was find religion. <laughs> that was pretty much the only plan you could have in that case. Right. There's always going to be a sign that uh, a volcano is going to erupt, though. Well, there are, but, you know, as humans, we're not that great at catching nature signs until it's, like, too late. <laughs> right. You know? I mean, but, yeah, I mean, there are there are signs and, and places monitor. But even Mount St. Helens. Right. They knew it was going to erupt, but they didn't know it was going to erupt. Right. Isn't that what the movies are based off of? It's Mount St. Hel- Helens? Or just eruptions in general? Who are the movies? The movies. Oh, gosh. Dante's Peak. Dante's Peak. I think that's based off Dante's Peak. Okay. <laughs> um, that's uh, Pierce Brosnan is a uh, is uh, I have not vol- seen that volcanologist. Movie. Whatever. They and call there's it. a girl, and there's an eruption, and lava. The seismologist. Yes, and he's more trying to warn everybody, and everyone's like, "Ho ho ho, James Bond, we don't believe you." And then the thing <laughs> blows up, and then he was right. Okay. If he uh, had had a kit, it if wouldn't he even have been an issue. Exactly. <laughs> it wouldn't even have been an issue. Well, hey, I want to thank you so much for stopping by. Is there any other thing that you want to, people to know? Because this, you know, we're laughing, but this is serious. This is serious stuff. Well, the theme for this year uh, is disap- disasters don't wait. Uh, make your plan today. And each week they have a theme. Uh, week one was make a plan. Week two was uh, build a kit. Mm-hmm. Week three is prepare for disasters. And lastly, the fourth week, teach your youth about preparedness. That's the, I think the last one is the key. Uh, teach your youth about preparedness because mm-hmm. they go about their day to day. They don't think about, you know, mommy, daddy takes, take, take, takes care of everything. But, you know, if we bring this to their attention and sit down and talk about it, I think uh, life will be a lot easier. That's Absolutely. what's great about those themes. Week one, make a plan. Week two, build a kit. Week three, prepare for disasters. And, Week four, teach youth about preparedness. You could just break that into quarters for the year 2020, and it pretty much fits. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> First quarter, we need to make that plan. Yeah. Absolutely. It's like, well, okay, that's great. So <laughs> we're going to listen to some quality, quality PSAs here and then come back with some football thoughts. What? Really? So, yes. No Giants. Oh, uh, we well, do have a football <laughs> yes. fan. So yeah, I, t- I take it you're picking them this weekend. Yeah, they play the Steelers, I believe, Monday night. Giants yeah, versus I'm not sure Pittsburgh if I'm going to buy into the Giants this year I'm, yet. <laughs> I don't know about all that. I'm going with the Giants. But good luck with that. You see what I'm wearing, right? I see. I see. You're uh, a Packer fan. Got to represent. Got to represent. represent. <laughs> so we will have more of that right after this. 
Hey golfers, are you looking for a new course to play? The Courses of Clear Creek is a 27-hole course with challenging greens located in the scenic rolling hills of Fort Hood. With a 300-yard driving range, two putting greens, and a four-hole kids course, we're the premier golf course in Central Texas. Our pro shop is always stocked with the latest golfing equipment and name brand apparel, while our beautiful pavilion overlooking the course is a great place to enjoy a cold beverage. The Courses of Clear Creek, open to the public, offering annual, monthly, and summer membership packages. Give us a call today at 254-287-4130 or find us on the web at hood.armymwr.com. Fort Hood's great big podcast. Everybody say up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, Everybody say up. Well, I certainly for, I'm, uh, <laughs> this is going well. No, we did ready army, right? Yes. Apparently I wasn't though. But all right. We're in the future now. Last weekend was week one of the NFL season. Was it now? Oh, National bum, bum. Football League. Was it now? Come on, man. Describe my outfit. I'm very proud right of now. myself today. Nope. nope. There we go. Come on, Charlie. Describe me. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> head to Dave is wearing from his toes Green Bay Packers. Green Bay Packers, Nike. I mean, in word no uh, <laughs> <they're> <laughs> shows, athletic shows, shows. athletic shows. Um, mm-hmm. Then we have some uh, blue jeans, blue jeans. Then a Green Bay Packers jersey with not num- just any Green with Bay number Packers twelve jersey. on it. Yeah, which is Hank Aaron. No. Oh, who? Luckily, we are joined by someone else who actually knows something yeah, about football. I don't football. know anything about football. Jacob Caldwell is the living editor of the Fort Hood Sentinel, and he is wearing Kansas City Chiefs attire since, you know, he has bragging rights right now. Welcome, Jacob. Thank you. Thank you. And that's tell, tell him number who 12, number 12 is. That's Aaron Rodgers. Is it? Aaron Rodgers. Why, was it that other? Was it Fluky? No. <laughs> it was Favre. Brett Favre. Number four. Oh, was he four? That's in my closet. I could have worn that one today, okay. too. Oh, yeah. Parvey. <laughs> I still have to buy Bart Starr. Then I'll have every okay. Hall of Fame Green Bay Packer. Because Rodgers is going to end up in the Hall of Fame. Bart Starr seems like it would have been a cowboy action figure I would have played with as a kid. Bart Starr in the Wild West Adventures. Oh, well, yeah. What a cool name, right? It is a cool name. Yeah. Bart Star. Were there two R's at the end of it? Yes, there were. Was he related to Ringo? I doubt it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Since, you know, he quarterback Alabama. And, you know, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Wasn't Just Ringo joking. from England? Yes. Yeah. A Liverpudlian. He was tiny. And then the big <laughs> man came. Uh, so, back when I used to do a sports column. Yes. In the Fort Hood Sentinel, mm-hmm. back in the day. Every week we would like pick winners. We even did that in Iraq when I was with the Cavs. Yeah, I remember that. All right. So, <sighs> Sergeant Lassard. I love Lassard sitting over there like, I have no, I clue, no idea what's Tell what's me happening. what <laughs> you know about football. I know about the Patriots. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so you deflate the ball. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Deflator gate. Yes. So um, I, I support the Patriots, even though I don't watch football. Well, there you go. Well, wait, you just said they were, they were cheaters. And then you immediately come in and I support that. Well, <laughs> no, I don't you're support, a mother. I don't Aren't support you, play in- you're a mother. And <laughs> what example are you setting? He's n- no, he still plays. I think who some famous guy that plays for the Patriots. The Flatergate man, <laughs> yeah. Tom Brady, Tom Brady. There we go. He is no longer a Patriot. Right. He is now a, he's in Tampa Bay. Tampa. Yep. <laughs> Tampa Bay. <laughs> so, round Tom, the room. The Tampa Bay round Gronkineers. The mm-hmm. there, there are four of us, so there could be a tie, right? Mm-hmm. One game has already been played as we're taping this. The mm-hmm. Kansas City Chiefs beat down on the Houston Texans. Mm-hmm. Uh, 34-20, something like that. That is correct. Yeah, I even got the score right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no notes in front of me or anything. <laughs> and I fell asleep in the third quarter on that game, so <laughs> they were not my team. But there are a bunch of games that will have already been played when this airs. Mm -hmm. So you can look really good or really bad on whether or not you picked it right. 
Oh, gosh. Are you ready? Okay. okay. All right, so we're going to go around the room, and we'll say, all right, it's a consensus. Just raise your hand. Uh, I'm going to say, all right, Seattle is playing at Atlanta, the Seattle Seahawks against the Atlanta Falcons in Atlanta. Raise your hand if you're taking the home team. The Falcons. Uh, no. I think I will because, you know. Because you make bad choices. Mm-hmm. Well, they might be cold in Seattle. So Seattle was a playoff team so last year. The Atlanta <laughs> Falcons were not. Does Seattle better. still have a stadium or they burned that down yet? <laughs> I think they still have a stadium. Okay. That's Just Portland. Checking. <laughs> All right, who likes oh, Seattle? Whatever. Who likes Seattle? Come I on. Like Seattle. I like Seattle because they have that famous guy who played okay. for them. You, Atlanta, Atlanta? You're going with the home team. I'm going All right. with Atlanta. All right, so am I. We're at a oh, impasse. A draw on that. Yeah. All right. New York Jets playing at Buffalo against the Bills. I didn't even know need to know who they were playing against. I yeah. was going to pick their opposing team. Okay. Buff- Does the Buffalo for sure? Do the Jets? Do they still have Benny? No. Sure. <laughs> up, 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 Benny and the Jets. Okay. Dun, dun, it's not a football song. Is it? Pick one. One team wears green, the other one's red, white, and blue. <laughs> Where are they playing at again? Buffalo. Where's the, oh, Buffalo, New York. The Bills. Yeah. It's two New York teams. New York. Oh. <laughs> They're both New York. Uh, the first one. The New Jets. York Jets. Yeah, You're taking know. the Jets. Bills or not? I'm going to go with the Jets. Okay. Really? Yeah, no, I'm the Bills. Yeah, so my father's a pilot. An, another so draw. I go with we're, the Jets. We're, we're a draw. There is no consensus yet. Okay, the Chicago Bears playing at the lowly Detroit Lions. Oh, two terrible teams. It's too easy. The Bears. The Bears. Bears. Louder. Bears. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to pick the Lions. Whoa! All right. Oh. The Lions, room says and Bears. The Bears. The yeah. Bears. But he's taking the Lions. <laughs> You go. All right. Green Bay Packers uh-huh. represent <laughs> at the Minnesota Vikings. I'm going to have to go with the Vikings. Hometown <laughs> team. Oh, he went there, too. I did. <laughs> Where are they from? That Minnesota. Minnesota. Twin Cities. Oh, okay. You know. Minneapolis, St. Paul. I'll go yeah. for that one. So you're going Minnesota? Yeah. I'm going Vikings. Or, no, I'm going the Packers. Really? We're at, yeah. well, I have to go with you my own go. team. I'm yeah, sorry, was, you know. Thanks for calling them the Vikings, by the way. They're the Vikings. Okay. Miami Dolphins at Ooh. your New England Patriots. Sergeant Lassard, who do you like? New England Patriots. New England. <laughs> Charlie. I will be a dolphin. <laughs> that was your flipper impersonation. That was, that's as good as it gets. Nice, Jack. Fitzpatrick versus Cam Newton. I'm going to pick Cam Newton. Yeah, duh. Yeah. No, it's it's New England. The room is going against you, Charlie. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No love for the fish. Well, we taste good in tuna. Yeah, you do. All right. <laughs> Philadelphia Eagles at the Washington football team. <laughs> no longer called their uh, uh, the uh, Indian politically in, incorrect uh, Native American name. Oh, I'm going to. You, you can't root for Washington right now. I don't. They're terrible. No, you, well, you can't root for them until they get a proper name. That, that should be a rule. You got to have a name. Come on. The Washington Wascally Wabbits. <laughs> huh? The Washington Elmo Fudd. The team, <laughs> the team formerly known as the Redskins, and they could have like a, a little a little symbol. Symbol, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm going with. Is anybody I'm going taking with Washington? I'm no. Not, no, no, no. All right, hey, we we agree yeah. on one game so far. Las Vegas Raiders. Oh my! The goodness Las gracious. Vegas Raiders. I can't believe they did that. Yep, at Carolina playing the Panthers. Oh, that's a that's tough, a tough game. Yeah. That's a tough. That's maybe a, the Raiders will win this time. I'm going with the Matt Rule led Carolina Panthers. Yeah, rookie coach. I'm going Panthers on this. Just because my mom really likes the Raiders, You're I'm going to go the for Raiders. the Raiders. <laughs> uh, I break the tie. No, I got to go with the Panthers. Yeah. Yeah. So you're on your own there, Sergeant Lassard. All right, next. Indianapolis Colts at Jacksonville Jaguars playing in Florida in Jacksonville. Ooh. Colts, Jags. I like to sounds cool. I like to the good place, so I have to go with the Jaguars. Jaguars? Yes. Jags. You like that too? You like the name, huh? Philip Rivers versus Minshew. I'm 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 picking Minshew. I'm picking the Jaguars. Really? Yep. I go with Philip Rivers before the wheels fall off. <laughs> okay. He's got, you know, the adrenaline. Yep. You know, week one. What right, kind so. of name is Minchu? 
Gardner Minshew is Gardner the starting Minshew. quarterback. Have you not seen him? I've not heard of him. Oh, he's he's hilarious. He's a he's a great follow on social media. Well, he, you, he oh, yeah. better be the man because I picked him. All right, you hear All that, right. Minshew? All right. The ugliest helmet in the NFL. The Cleveland Browns travel to Baltimore to take on the Ravens. Mm. It's another stinky, stinky game. Oh, I don't who, think so. Who at one time were the, the Cleveland the Browns. Browns? I think uh, the Ravens. I think the Ravens. <laughs> Ravens. I think the Ravens just crush them. Yeah, it's it's. Ugly. I'm going with with Baltimore. Yep, the Ravens. Hey, now there's a unanimous choice: the Baltimore Ravens, and the Los Angeles Chargers travel to Cincinnati Ugh. to take on this year's number one draft pick, Joe Burrow. Oh yeah, who is the quarterback now for the Cincinnati Bengals? Boy. Rookie quarterback Boy. at home, first start. Rookie quarterback. There was no. I, I don't can't even tell you who the Chargers starting quarterback is. No exhibition games played, so nobody knows That's what these wash. teams are going to look like. Yeah, you who know, knows? Uh, when I was a kid, I tried because I liked the Cincinnati Reds. Yeah, I decided I would get into the Bengals. Yeah, it did not work. Didn't last. It huh? did, no. <laughs> yeah. No. You going to pick them today? You know, for old times' sake, I am. Okay, I am. Las Vegas one. Or what was it? Los Angeles. <laughs> Los Angeles. Los Angeles. <laughs> you're going with the. You're going with. I, oh enough. boy, the Chargers. Just, I'm going to pick the Chargers just because of the rookie quarterback for Cincinnati. But I, I don't feel good about it. I'm going with Charlie. Yeah. I, hey. You know, he's either going to be really good yeah. or really bad. Yeah. On the I like first him. Game. I like him in the future. I don't know if I like Kinda him for like game the one. Yep. Tom Brady. Is now a Tampa Bay mm-hmm. Buccaneer, and he travels to New Orleans to take on Drew Brees and the Saints. Mm. Yeah, uh, boy, that's going to be a great game. Two Hall of and Fame quarterbacks, this and they're is, both in their 40s. This is hard to pick, not because both I expect both teams to be bad, but because I expect both teams to be good. Right. So but so with that in mind, I see them as kind of even, and, I'm, and just for because of continuity, I'm going to pick the Saints. The Saints. I was just about to say so the marching Saints. marching in. Yeah, I'm voting against Two. Tom Brady. Hmm. Three so. for the Saints. That's unanimous. I'm going to go for the Saints, too. I think one of those, it's the team where the 40-year-old quarterback does not get his leg broken, Joe <laughs> right. Theismann style. Yeah, yep. you hear that? Suck an Somebody's going to get beat up. One of those two guys is going to go out on a stretcher this year, Brady. I think. Because they're getting they're, they're pushing it. They're getting up there. They're pushing it. They're getting up there. Brady. So we will see. But, yeah, I'll still take Drew Brees in week one. Arizona Cardinals mm. at the San Francisco 49ers. That's if wildfires don't make the air unbreathable. That should make it more interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Cardinals because my wife likes their mascot. Well, yeah, she's she loves birds. So that one's for her. Okay. Do the 49ers ever win? Yeah. They went to the. They were, uh, they were in the Super Bowl. They were in the last Super Bowl year. last year. Oh my God! Did they really? <laughs> yeah, they really were. The did they Liners? win the Super Bowl? No, they, they did not. not. No, it doesn't matter. Does to it? His Chiefs. Doesn't matter. I'm going to go for the Cardinals. Wow. Yeah. No. Uh boy. No, I'm I'm picking the 49ers. 49ers, 49ers. So we're split yeah. on that one because the the folks that know football <laughs> pick the home team. Okay. Dallas Cowboys. Let's ooh Sunday night game. Mm-hmm. Dallas Cowboys go to Los Angeles to play the Rams. Mm. Hmm. You know, once upon a time last year, I went to the Dallas Cowboys to do a video of the combine they had mm-hmm. going on there. And I went to get some refreshments. And the refreshments were so astronomically priced. And my wallet <laughs> still hurts so badly from from just getting two hot dogs and two drinks that I cannot, in good conscience, vote for the Cowboys. You're picking against the boys. Yes. Same here. When was the last time the Cowboys won a Super Bowl? You Early 90s. You didn't yeah. know when the 49ers went to the Super Bowl. Early 90s. Mm-hmm. Jake? Uh, I think it's going to be a good game, and I think the Cowboys are going to be better this year of their new coach, but I'm going to pick the Rams. Wow. I used to make a living on the sports column. Always, always didn't matter if they were good, bad, or indifferent. Mm-hmm. Picking against the Cowboys because, you know, they're the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's unanimous. Yeah, you the Cowboys. The yeah, not so much, Jerry. All right. Pitts, Monday Night Football. Two more games to go. Right. Pittsburgh Steelers 
travel to the Meadowlands to take on the New York football giants. See, there's a, there's a cowboy connection in this game because Jason Garrett's there now yes, he as is. our offensive coordinator. And maybe he'll be better in that role, but I'm just going to pick against Jason Garrett. <laughs> just I'm picking habit, the, right? I'm, yeah, I'm picking the Steelers. Steelers. I was thinking about popcorn and I don't remember the teams. <laughs> Steelers and Giants. Oh. Uh, in, in New Jersey. Giants. Wow. Giants. Giants now. Steelers. So we're split on that one. And last game of the week one. Uh, which happened on Monday since this mm-hmm. is airing on, you know, well, we're going to look either really good or really bad. Tennessee Titans at Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado, mm. taking on the Broncos. You've been to Denver. I have. I'm going to go with Denver because I like mountains. <laughs> okay. I was going to go with the <laughs> Denver. Plus, they have a really cool mascot, too. They got a Bronco. Uh, I'm picking the Titans. Yeah. Just because it's week one and yeah, Von I, Miller's I, out. Von Miller's blah, blah, blah. out. The and Titans it? have a great running game and a real decent defense. It's hard to win at Denver though, so I, I completely understand if you pick Denver. Tannehill's their quarterback, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I go with Tennessee too, so we're split. And so there's week one, and football is on is underway. Isn't that just awesome? I'm thrilled. I, I've we've, it's been a sports desert. Uh, I'm the baseball. I'm a Royals fan, and I've tried to watch some of the baseball, and, and they're <laughs> they just good once upon a they're time. They're just terrible, and, and I have a hard time watching it with cardboard cutouts in the in the stands. 1985 and called. I'm they not, want their team back. <laughs> but, George uh, Brett. I've enjoyed watching a little bit of the playoff basketball. Yeah, I'm not a super hyped up NBA fan, but. Yeah, I'm glad football's back. Yeah, I really missed March Madness this mm-hmm. year. Yeah, yeah. College basketball oh, yeah, to me is locally, more fun to watch. Locally, you know, both Baylor teams had a real shot, good shot at yep. doing well. Yep. Not this year. Mm-hmm. The other thing that's going on, though, it is September, and Jacob is our living editor of the Fort Hood Sentinel, mm-hmm. is you're in the middle of a four-part series uh, talking suicide prevention. So that's really why we brought you in here. The football thing was just for yeah. But I, you're you're probably an expert in being a Royals fan. Ah, the uh, <laughs> it's not that bad. You know, we won one like four years ago. We won the World Series. Yeah. What have you done for me lately? Well, that's the the, the problem with a small market. Says team. the Cincinnati fan. <laughs> well, it's, yeah. it's, it's says the Milwaukee Brewers fan yeah. that hasn't won one. Yeah. Yeah. A bunch of welcome to the Big Loser Fort <laughs> podcast. <sighs> <laughs> but with this, all the changes, uh, I remember your, your first article was talking about uh, connectivity and making a connection, leaders right. talking to subordinates. Mm-hmm. Second article that was in last week's paper kind of went deeper. Yeah, the first article was kind of a wave top. It, was just, it just broached the topic and, and kind of talked about the themes f- uh, that the Department of Defense put out for this year's Suicide Prevention Month. Prevention Month. And, uh, yeah, connect to protect is – and uh, the hashtag for that is be there. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was talked about in the first article. That was two weeks ago. And last week I talked uh, specifically about soldiers mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, digging a little bit deeper in the topic about how soldiers – specifically have things to deal with and how they can deal with it. Sure. Uh, and uh, this next next one that I'm writing is looking more specifically at veterans. Because, you know, we have That's a, a large veteran yeah. community Huge. in the Fort Hood area in mm-hmm. Central Texas. And uh, I'll be talking about, I'll be talking uh, about that topic specifically uh, for veterans and the resources that are available and, you know, things they can do to... Uh, prevent the 22 a day right you know you know it's it's one thing i mean the active service members taking their own any anybody taking their own, their own life is a tragedy but they're more than 20 a day yep of, of veterans who end their own lives i think think about that i mean this is really just hitting me right now but the internet is very upset because they have a perception of, of the number of people who have died at Fort hood mm-hmm. by, since the beginning of the year. Sure. 20 a day yeah. and, and people 
it's crickets. You don't hear anything. 20 a day. Right. Where where are you concerned people? I think that's why we have a month like this with an observance like this because you do get numb to it. If something just ca- keeps happening over and over and over for an extended period of time, you, you know, we as humans have mechanisms to deal with it by just blocking it out. Mm-hmm. And we've got to not block it out. We've got to like bring it up to the forefront again and talk about it because that's the only way we can make a difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's hard and it's hard. Melissa, thoughts? Um, when it comes to 22 a day, um, yeah. I haven't personally been affected by veterans committing suicide, um, right. but I have been affected by family friends committing suicide, so sure. I really uh, feel deeply yep. about the suicide prevention in general. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, and I do feel that the system could pay more attention to it. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, so we go from football to suicide. Well, that's a rough transition. But uh, There isn't a good one, but you know what? Some, <laughs> there isn't. There's not a good transition, and that's fine. Sometimes you just got to, like, yep. get over the hump and talk about something that's uncomfortable. And it's, it's not a super comfortable topic, but the in that, those that's, notes, that's you, why we're talking about do it. Do you have the hotline, national hotline number in there? I do not. Oh, let me slip. Yeah, well, it probably does. Let me keep looking. Next next week, uh, um, or you know, part four of the series, we talked about part one was a was an overview, and yeah. part part two is about soldiers, and part mm-hmm. three is about veterans. Part four, I'm going to talk about resources available for spouses and family members. Sure, in, in that community, and dig a little bit some of the challenges and struggles that they they deal with. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but yeah, if you have any kind of problem at all and you need help. You can call 1-800-342-9647. One more time. 1-800-342-9647. And that's what? That's a a military crisis line. Okay, perfect. If you can't remember that number, everybody's got a phone with Google on it, and just type in suicide uh, crisis line, Mm -hmm. and that number will come. And if you can't, if you're not capable of doing that, call 911. Yep. And here locally, they have a chaplain on call Mm -hmm. 24-7. 287 uh, chap 287 chap it's real easy 254 287 chap mm-hmm. real easy to remember real easy to find uh please reach out if you need help and uh jake yeah thanks for coming by appreciate it absolutely we're going to do something different this week normally we do segment and then yeah. blah, blah. uh but we're actually going to end from here um so that music that you're hearing me the show is ending. We've come to the, the end. Melissa, get you get the last word. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Say yeah. something intelligent. Because this is how people are gonna judge us. Oh. This is what you're gonna be remembered. By. <laughs> something intelligent. This yes. is on the way on out. The Here we uh, go. I would say good morning, good evening, and good night. Can I steal that? Well, you already did, so <laughs> sure. <laughs> Alright, and we will see all of you. Next week. Next week. Tar starts standing and cracks Bye. crumble to grab a lance. <laughs> Stone the travel though I know in with a broken heart. Broken heart.